All right, good morning, good morning, good morning. Here we are again. Oh, it is 9.45 on the button, and we're right on time. Johnny on the spot. <laughs> anyway, um, this morning we will be studying in the Word of God in the book of John again, chapter 18, starting in verse 28 with uh, the so-called trial before Pilate, the first trial before Pilate, right? Uh, Pilate being the so-called Roman governor of the region, okay? Um, I have a heating pad on my back, so if you see me fidgeting, that's me adjusting it. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> anyway, as we open the Word of God, as always, let's open with a word of prayer. Lord God, thank you for your so many blessings. So many blessings. Thank you for your word, and may your spirit be with us this morning as we open your word. That we can comprehend what you're saying to us. And may the lesson be applied to each of our lives. And Lord, any listening that don't already know you as Savior, may today be their day. That your spirit will convict them of their sin and their need for Jesus. We ask in the name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, and our God. In his name, amen. Okay. Well, again, good morning, everybody. Um, all kinds of interesting things going on around the world that we won't get into because this is not that kind of Bible study, <laughs> right? Other than to say, uh, it's interesting to see Bible prophecies in the fulfillment stage, right? If you're studying eschatology and Revelations and Daniel and Ezekiel and, you know, Matthew 24, da, da, da. Anyway, um, today we're going to be talking about uh, Jesus on the, in front of Pilate for a trial Right? Because remember last week we talked about how he was arrested, this cohort, probably 600 Roman soldiers, plus soldiers from the temple guard, etc. This crowd, almost an army, right, <laughs> comes to arrest Jesus. It doesn't matter how big the army was. If Jesus didn't want to go, they couldn't do anything about it. But anyway, he, because Jesus, you know, came... Uh, Voluntarily, that's why he came to Earth to fulfill this, to to suffer and die on the cross and pay the price for our sins. So this was something he was doing willingly, right? Okay. So Peter had just finished denying Jesus his third time, and the cock crowed, and you know, of course, then he had this remorse, right, for having. Um, thought he was so strong, and he was to a degree, right? I mean, he's the one that whipped out the sword and tried to cut Malchus in half, cut his ear off, <laughs> right? You know, Jesus in his mercy, right, told Peter, just put the sword away. This is not the way this works, and healed Malchus, right? Anyway. So we get down here in chapter 18, verse 28, and we've got, right? And they led Jesus, therefore, from Caiaphas into the Praetorium, which is the official residence of the governor, right? It's what it's become to know, right? And it was early, and they themselves did not enter into the praetorium in order that they might not be defiled, but might eat the Passover. This brings up a whole series of questions, right? First off, how can they be so concerned about purity that they won't enter the house of a Roman? Right? Because then they might not be able to eat the Passover. Secondly, <laughs> here they are breaking every rule they have to convict 
and crucify Jesus, the actual, the actual Lord God, right? Sometimes logic and reason just does not play because we're so busy with doing our thing. We're not looking at the big picture. We're not looking at the will of God. We're only looking at what does Larry want to do today, right? We do that a lot, don't we? Well, that's what they're doing. They're doing what they want to do regardless, right? They're paying no attention to the realities of what they're doing. Now, brings up another question. That they might eat the Passover. Hadn't the Passover already meal happened the night before? And Jesus and his disciples ate the Passover meal. We call the Lord's Supper. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? <laughs> I remember I had talked about there were two Sabbaths that week, right? And therefore, you know, the way this whole thing came down, Jesus was actually crucified on Thursday, not on Friday. Right. But in addition to that, the following festival, which lasted seven days, was sometimes also called Passover. And so this may be all that John's referring to. We don't I mean we don't really know, right? But it does bring up the question. <laughs> if we already had the Passover meal, why are they worried about eating the Passover meal that day, right? So it's early in the morning, right? Pilate therefore went out to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? Hmm. And they answered and said to him, if this man were not an evildoer, we would not have delivered him up to you. Okay. I'm going to guess they thought that this was a given. They could take Jesus to Pilate. Pilate would immediately convict him, sentence him to death on the cross. Pilate, on the other hand, had maybe second thoughts, and I say that because of this. How did they get a Roman cohort to go arrest Jesus if they hadn't already talked to Pilate about it? Right? <laughs> you don't just get 600 Roman soldiers to do your bidding without the governor's permission, okay? So they had talked to Pilate, apparently. And they thought this was just going to be a you know, rubber stamp deal, right? Pilate's like, now wait a minute. What did this guy do, right? That we were, you were so afraid we had to send 600 soldiers to arrest him. And it was pretty much uneventful. <laughs> Just brings up some questions, doesn't it? And Pilate is saying, wait a minute. What did this guy do? And they say, well, he's an evildoer, <laughs> Right? Pilate therefore said to them, take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews said to him, we are not permitted to put anyone to death. See, under Roman law, the Jews could not exercise capital punishment. They couldn't put somebody to death. You know, they could do all kinds of other things to them, but they could not put them to death. Only Romans under Roman law and Roman court. So they brought into Pilate because that's what they wanted. Now, they thought that they were achieving something. They thought by killing Jesus, they were eliminating this risk to their lifestyle, right? They had no clue that this was the plan. This was God's will that God the Son would come to die on the cross to pay the price for the sins of the world, right? They didn't, they didn't get it, even though they've read the Old Testament over and over and over, and there's hundreds of prophecies talking about this, right? 
and everything from what he's doing to how he's going to die, etc. Right? You know, from in Psalms when it talks about they're going to cast lots for his clothes, that his bones won't be broken. You know, all these things that ends up being fulfilled in Jesus. Right? You know, they they had done all of the, they they read all of this stuff over and over and over but did not put it together that the Messiah, Daniel 9, would be cut off. He would die. The Messiah would come and die, right? It was told. <laughs> That's what's going to happen, okay? So, but they had their agenda. They thought they were accomplishing what was best for them, right? Right? that we can't put him to death. Verse 32, that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spoke, signifying by what kind of death he was about to die. In John 3, he talked about being lifted up. They put him up on the cross, like Moses did with the snake on the stick, right? He'd be lifted up, and he was. It's interesting how the Bible talks about in such detail exactly how Jesus would die on the cross, which was written hundreds of years before they invented crucifixion. <laughs> Nobody was dying like that when it was written in the Bible that Jesus, the Messiah, would die on the cross, right? Anyway, Pilate therefore entered again into the praetorium, and summoned Jesus. So now he's inside with him and Jesus and said to him, are you the king of the Jews? Now, see, they said he was an evildoer. See, there's more to the story, right? They had previously told him that this guy was claiming to be the son of God, the king of the Jews, right? And that's probably the, the phrase that got Pilate to react and send the cohort to go get him, right? Because... In Romans, right, only the Romans run the show, nobody else. <laughs> now, you can be king of whatever you want to be king of, just do not interfere with Roman rule, okay? Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Are you saying this of your own initiative, or did others tell you about me? He's saying, What do you say I am? Pilate is on trial. Not Jesus. Jesus is there fulfilling the will of God the Father. Pilate is on trial. He's heard about Jesus. Everybody had heard about Jesus. He'd been going all over the countryside, healing people like crazy, raising the dead, you know, etc. Everybody knew about Jesus. Everybody, right? Even Pilate. And Jesus says, who do you say that I am? Pilate need now to answer correctly. <clears throat> right? What did my note here say? That's from the other chapter. Okay. Pilate answered and said, I am not a Jew. Am I? Your own nation and chief priests delivered you up to me. What have you done? Right? <laughs> Why do they want to kill you? Why is this so important to them? Right? They didn't like the way he was upsetting their apple cart. You know? Telling them about the kingdom, the spiritual kingdom. All they wanted was the earthly rule, and they were running the show under Pilate, right? But they were fat and happy, so they, you know, they didn't see any reason for any big change to come about. Jesus answered and said, my kingdom is not of this world. You know, this world would be Satan's world. Pilate is doing the bid of Satan. <laughs> Through Caesar, etc., the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin is predominantly doing the bidding of Satan. I would say mostly unaware that that's what they were doing, but that's what they were doing, okay? My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would be fighting, okay? 
that I might not be delivered up to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not of this realm. Right? Mm -hmm. Jesus came to solve the sin and thus the death problem. Not to conquer the Romans, you know. I mean, he could do that <laughs> in a snap if he wanted to. He's God, for crying out loud, right? You know, now he frequently uses other nations, you know, he used the Assyrians to conquer Israel. He used the Babylonians, you know, to conquer Assyria and Judah. He used the Medes and the Persians to conquer the Babylonians. He used the Greeks to conquer them. He used the Romans to conquer them, right? I mean, he's done this throughout history over and over. And when it wasn't the right time, he'd made, he'd made changes, when the Assyrians tried to conquer Jerusalem, remember? The angel of the Lord came down and killed 185,000 Assyrian soldiers in one night. Right? Of course, this is God. God created the heavens and the earth just by speaking, right? <laughs> you know? And Pilate thinks he's the big dog. He has no idea who he's talking to. He should have had an idea. He's heard all about Jesus. He should have had an idea of who he was talking to. And Jesus' manner, right? He's not yelling or screaming or, you know, carrying on and all that. You know, he's not yelling at God, right? He's not yelling at Pilate. <laughs> he gave Pilate a chance. Who do you say that I am? Pilate therefore said to him, so you are a king. <laughs> Jesus answered, you say correctly, right? I am a king and for this I have been born and for this I have come into the world to bear witness of the truth. Everyone who is of the truth Here's my voice. Remember Jesus said in 14.6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Not me, Larry. <laughs> by Jesus. I'm just a frail, messed up sinner named Larry. Jesus is the Lord God Almighty who came for this purpose to die on the cross to pay the price for our sins so that we can accept the free gift of salvation just by believing of what he did for us. Accepting Jesus, accepting his gift. Pilate has been offered this gift. You know what he says? Pilate says to him, what is truth? Great question, right? But he doesn't wait for Jesus' answer. He doesn't wait to find out what is truth. When he had said this, he went out again to the Jews. I would think <laughs> that he would have wanted an understanding of what Jesus was saying. He didn't. He failed his trial. What's your position when Jesus offers you salvation? Are you at least asking him to show you the truth? So that you can also make an, shall we say, an intelligent decision to accept Jesus. Have your sins forgiven. Spend eternity in heaven <clears throat> with him. As opposed to damnation. 
being cast into the lake of fire. Don't go there. Don't be like Pilate. No. Listen. Discern. If you study, you will find out that all the claims of Jesus are true. It's not hard to find the truth. Jesus is the truth. Pilate failed. So he goes back out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him. You convinced me to send 600 Roman soldiers to go arrest this guy? He hasn't done anything. Maybe he's a little confused, you know, talking about truth. <laughs> right? Being the king of another realm. Right? He probably thought Jesus was a little bit crazy. And Jesus was telling him the truth. Right? <laughs> anyway. He said, but you have a custom that I should release someone to you at the Passover. Do you wish then that I release to you the king of the Jews? Now, I don't know if that was some kind of sarcastic remark, right? Jesus is the king of the Jews, but he, he apparently got a kick out of this. And he didn't really have any <laughs> lost love, you know, for the the Jewish leaders. So he, when we crucified Jesus, the sign above Jesus said in three different languages, the king of the Jews, <laughs> right? They got all upset about that. He's not the king, right? We'll talk about that in just a second. You want me to release to you the king of the Jews? You've arrested him. I find no guilt in him. Should I just release him to you? Therefore, they cried out again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now, Barabbas was a robber. He was part of a group who had been arrested and had committed murder. And I'm sure he thought he was doing the right thing, too, right? Don't know. We don't know a great deal about Barabbas, but they're like, no, don't release, don't release to us the Prince of Peace. But give us this other evildoer, Barabbas. They were so intent upon getting rid of Jesus. They would accept anything as long as it got rid of Jesus. Barabbas wasn't upset in their apple cart, even though he's the one that might have caused an insurrection and, and had the Romans come in and kill a bunch of Jews, which they thought they were so afraid that Jesus might do, right? <laughs> and oh, give us Barabbas. So their trial, they failed. They had a chance, another chance to accept Jesus. They said, no, we don't want Jesus. We're standing with Satan. We don't want Jesus. You don't have to accept Jesus. The gentleman, Jesus Christ, will allow you with your free will to choose. Oh, don't make that mistake. Don't fail your trial. Pilate failed. The Jews failed. Don't you fail too. Give us Barabbas. And... In 19, and Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him, right? Which was prophesied in Isaiah. And the soldiers wore a crown of thorns and put it on his head, right? And a purple robe. And they began to come up to him and say, Hail, King of the Jews. 
and to give him blows in the face. How would you like to be them a short time later when they died? Now they're standing before Jesus. The one they hit in the face. Wouldn't want to be them. Mm -hmm. How often do we make similar mistakes? We're not physically hitting Jesus in the face, but are we spiritually slapping him in the face by doing stuff that we know he doesn't want us to do? Pilate came out again and said to them, Behold, I am bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no guilt in him. Second time. He's innocent. <clears throat> Had him scourged anyway. You know, I mean, after all, he's just a Jew. He's not a Roman. I can whip him if I want to, right? Jesus, therefore, came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said to them, Behold the man. <laughs> <coughs> the man. The unique God-man of all history. When therefore the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out saying, Crucify, crucify. They wanted Jesus dead. They thought that would be victory. <laughs> See, they didn't realize he came for that reason. To pay the price for their sins. And for my sins. And for your sins. That's why he came. They were supposed to be the experts <laughs> in the scriptures. And they did not understand. Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered and said, We have a law, and by the law he ought to die, because he made himself out to be the Son of God. So God the Son told them, I'm here. I'm the Messiah. I'm the Son of God, right? I am God the Son. I am equal to God the Father. And for telling them the truth, oh, you got to die. <laughs> you know, it's that simple. According to our rules, right, that we made, you got to die. On their judgment day, I sure wouldn't want to be them either. When Pilate therefore heard this statement, he was more afraid. Romans were afraid of gods that looked like men and stuff. You know, they're they like, woo, you know. And, you know, his wife had had dreams about him and said, don't get involved with this guy, right? <laughs> he entered into the praetorium and said to Jesus, where are you from? And Jesus did not answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and I have authority to crucify you? <laughs> he thought. <laughs> right? Jesus answered and said, You would have no authority over me unless it had been given to you from above. And for this reason, he who delivered me up to you has the greater sin. Right? <laughs> the Jews but not just the Jews. Remember, Jesus went to the cross because we're sinners. All of us. It was our sin that put Jesus on the cross. If it wasn't for our sin, Jesus would not have had to die. But since there's no other solution to our sin problem than Jesus Christ, God the Son, in obedience to God the Father, came to earth to die on the cross, to pay the price for all our sins, past, present, and future. All our sins. As a result of this, Pilate made efforts to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If you release this man, you are no friend to Caesar. Everyone who makes himself out to be a king opposes Caesar, right? So, he says he's a king, you know, but Caesar is the king, right? 
When Pilate therefore heard these words, he brought Jesus out, sat down on the judgment seat at the place called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now, it was the day of preparation for the Passover. Once again, another Passover, right? It was about the sixth hour. Hmm. So it's what? Noon? <laughs> and he said to the Jews, Behold your king. And they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priest, the chief priest, plural, answered, we have no king but Caesar. We have no king but Caesar. The Lord God is not your king, right? Only Caesar. Boy, did they step in it. So Pilate delivered him to be crucified. So many people make the mistake. You say Pilate failed his trial. The Jews certainly failed their trial. Don't you fail your trial. Lord God, so many people don't know you. Many do. Praise you for that. Many don't. Those that don't know you, especially anyone here in your word, may your spirit be able to reach them today. That they won't fail their trial. They will accept Jesus, become part of your family, have your salvation, spend eternity with you. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for being you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that's our letter, a letter, our lesson in the trial, supposedly of Jesus before Pilate. <laughs> Jesus wasn't on trial. He came to do what he came to do. Pilate was on trial etc. Anyway, our lesson for today, God bless you. Accept Jesus and have a great week.